Almost Visible Cities by Gregory Normanton. Cities and the Desert. The best way to approach Idaba is by sea, and that reclining on deck half asleep after a meal, for only by mistaking it for a dream can the mind accept what the eye perceives. The masters of Idaba, in founding their city on the coast of a vast and featureless desert, appear to have forgotten the story of Babel, for the buildings they have commissioned rise as if they would escape the earth, which is the destiny of all our endeavours. As your boat nears the harbour, you strain your neck to see the tops of the towers, and at once you long for their windswept heights, for you have entered the heat and dust which is the lot of the city's migrant workers. You see them in their thousands, sweating in the sun or shadowed in the dry wells of the towers, while in the upper stories, the citizens grow fat on revenue from Idaba's famous export. This mineral salt, which locals call hullum, grants whoever tastes it an overwhelming sense of ease and prosperity. Little wonder that it should be valued above all the spices, for its use bankrupts nations whose populations turn for comfort to the very illusion that first enslaved them. To the beneficiaries of Idaba's wealth, plenty appears the natural condition of life. Yet even in the midst of luxury, there are signs of decay for those willing to read them. It is possible still to visit those islands built in the shapes of palm trees and crescent moons in the waters off the coast. For a time, their whitewashed villas were the most desirable residences in Idaba. Now the poison sea laps at their foundations, while lurid blooms of algae stifle the brackish lagoons between abandoned gardens. From the vantage point of the towers, few citizens choose to look at these corroded strips of reclaimed land. Instead, they retreat with their purses into vast bazaars where the luxuries of the world accumulate. It is said by the workers that these temples of commerce are, des are destined to become the mausoleums of Idaba, or to vanish entirely in one of the ever more frequent sandstorms that bury whole streets and drift as high as date palms against the dusty towers. Visiting dignitaries, generously hosted in return for singing the city's praises, insist that its mineral wealth will allow Idaba to meet all challenges. Yet nobody knows how long the deposits of Hullam will last. Idabans dread to contemplate their depletion, for, without revenue to bind them to their employers, the migrants will drift elsewhere in pursuit of work, and the day will dawn when Idaba proves to have been nothing but a mirage, a vision that dissolves into the timeless and levelling sands from whence it seemed, once, to challenge the heavens.